All right, welcome today to the Exit Your Way Roundtable. With me today, I have Mr. Biz, aka <laughs> Ken Wentworth. Thanks for stopping by today, Ken. Yeah, Damon, thanks for having me. I've been looking forward to this ever since we uh, started talking about doing this. Yeah, well, it's 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 uh, really cool to get to talk to you, Professor Pete Alexander int introduced us, and and uh, he I saw the the episode where you're on his his podcast as well, and I then uh, did some research on you, and you've got a quite a following on Facebook, and 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 let's back up a little bit first because you are a you help people with CFO services and things like that. If you could explain that a little bit, let's start there. Yeah, so um, the term you can use a, a variety of different terms: on-demand CFO, part-time CFO, fractional CFO. Um, really, all it means is that I help owners operate their businesses more profitably, more efficiently. Uh, that's how I break it down in brass tactics. Think about someone who is, and I always use this silly example, so I apologize to Paul the plumber. But you're Paul the plumber, you're a business owner, and you're really, really good at plumbing. Yeah. But you might not have you might have 20, 30 years of experience with plumbing and you're just an absolute master plumber, but you don't have the business experience. And some parts of that are uncomfortable for you. And you're you know, you know, you need to improve on them. You're just not that good at them. Those are people that I can help have a massive impact um, because a lot of times they're and it sounds bad, but I don't mean it in a bad way, but they're they're successful despite themselves. Right. They've got some yeah. some blind spots that sometimes they don't even realize and then when we we open their eyes to those blind spots and fix those things, their business just absolutely rocket ship takes off. So it's super fulfilling. I absolutely love what I do. Very cool. Very cool. Now that leads me to the to the thing that we talk about. And, and, and you simply don't see finance people that have the type of following that you that you have uh, on on uh, social media platforms. What kind of inspired you to tell your story and, and start using uh, social media in that way? Yeah, I'll tell you, I had zero social. So my, I had a 20 plus year corporate career, was in a, for, a, in a Fortune 15 company, was in, made it to the top 3% and just decided to leave um, and, and left yeah. and started my own business. And at that time, didn't even know what I do now was a thing because I had been in the corporate world for so long. But I figured out pretty quickly that I needed to establish some some business social media, and yeah. honestly, I, I heard um, I started following Grant Cardone, and yeah. he, you know he has a lot of really good material. Some of it's a little over the top for me, but nonetheless, some of it's really good. And yeah. he explained it, Damon. It was very interesting. I'd never thought about it from this perspective, but he said, you know, you you just think about this, McDonald's. How successful is McDonald's? Is McDonald's successful because they had the best food? Heck no. They're successful because they're ubiquitous. They're everywhere, right? People yeah. know them. It's a known brand. And so he talks about it's not always the best product or service. Of course, you want to give good service and good value, yeah. but it's the best known, right? People that can, you, they know, like, and trust you a lot sooner. So he, the way he explained it really struck to me. And he said, if you have a, an expertise or a talent to where you can help people, and you're not doing everything in your power to get in front of those people so they know that you're there if they need to the help, then you're kind of being selfish. And so he kind yeah. of flipped it all the way back around. And I thought, man, that that does make a lot of sense. You know, someone I'm I'm based in Ohio, and someone in Idaho needs my help. If I don't if I'm not getting out there and putting myself out there, how are they even gonna know I exist to, to where I could help them, especially with everything that's going on with the pandemic? You know, all these businesses yeah. are failing, it just breaks my heart. But so I started uh, started all these different social media platforms. And um, honestly, a big part of it, too, I think, has been uh, the Mr. Biz brand, which yeah. started from I've got a radio show, Mr. Biz Radio. And the, the general manager of the station, long story, but um, general ma manager of the station heard a guest refer to me as as you like, geez, I'm, I feel like I'm talking to Mr. Business here, like Mr. Biz. Yeah. And the general manager of the st uh, station just had me walk past and he turned around and looked and said, that's it. You're Mr. Biz. And I'm like, no, 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 not that. <laughs> and, and unbeknownst to me, the radio station started to promote the show with promos that said uh, featuring Mr. Biz. Yeah. And I didn't even know they were doing that. Well, I go to a networking event here locally and someone comes up to me and says, hey, Mr. Biz, blah, 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 blah. And I thought, 
they walked away. I thought that's really strange. Who, you know, there are only three or four people in this conversation. How did this get out? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so at first I was very hesitant, but then I just kind of rolled with it. And uh, I think yeah. that's been a, a, a big part of it. You know, I get, I had someone flag me down in the Orlando airport and said, you know, Mr. Biz, and I, I'm really bad with names. And so I was like, uh, I said, I'm really sorry. I, I apologize. I don't remember your name. And the guy said, oh, I've never met you before. He said, but I follow yeah. you. I watch all your videos. I feel like I know you. And he starts quoting things that I've said, like about oh my, my family, funny things I've said about my family, my daughters, my wife, yeah. Mrs. Biz, the Biz Kids, you know. Um, so we just kind of run with it and have fun with it. And uh, I think that's been part of it, too, is I think, you know, Damon, probably a lot of, you know, business finance type people, the content they're sharing on social media, while it may be informative, it has to have some some air of entertainment to it. And I'm not talking about tap dancing and telling jokes the whole time, but there's got to be some charisma, some some personality to it. I think it makes it engaging for people to watch. It's not just boring like someone lecturing to you. Yeah. 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 You know, I, I suffer from the fact that I went to engineering school for five years. So it's <laughs> it's and, you, know, you do have to break out of that because it is it is we are we as as people like yourself working in finance or me working in in business and more technical parts of a business is it, it is you have to people want to listen to it right they want to learn but they don't want to learn from a dictionary so then uh, that's what i've noticed about your videos too i mean you're talking about i mean they're they're not easy topics but you you make them simple for people to understand and i think they relate to that yeah, that's the goal. I mean, that's the goal. It's like I uh, said, it's, it's it's easy for us, any of us, right? And it doesn't matter what profession you're in. Yeah. It is. Yeah. I'll, I'll go back and pick on Paul the plumber again. If Paul the plumber starts talking to me in plumbing terms, he loses me because I don't know crap yeah. about plumbing, right? But if he yeah. breaks it down and puts it in layman's terms, all of a sudden I, I can understand better what the heck he's talking about. And I'm engaged now because I understand and I'm learning. Whereas if he starts throwing out technical plumbing terms and they're over my head, I just disengage and say, I don't understand. And, you know, um, so I think it's easy for us, any of us to do that, no matter what your profession is. So I think it's very important to sort of, you know, keep that uh, at a level set that, that people can understand things and they don't just zone out. It's much easier, of course, when you can see them, you can see the nonverbals, right? You're speaking yeah. in front of a crowd or even one-on-one or one to many, and you can start to see the nonverbal communications like, oh crap, I think I lost them with that. Let me back up. All right, let me explain. I just threw out a term that I, I can tell you guys probably don't understand. Let me back up. Let me let me try to break this down a little bit more. So I think that definitely has helped is helped uh, with you know all the videos I've done and the following and things like that. Yeah, yeah. So what do you see? I mean, you're you're in businesses today. I mean, what do you see as the biggest challenges that the pandemic has really caused for businesses overall this year? Well, I hate to use the word that everyone hears and seems to be just it's almost like nails on a chalkboard, but yeah. the, the, ability, the ability to pivot. Yeah. Um, and I got to come up with a new word for that, Damon. That means the same Everybody thing. Does. Because people are like, oh, my gosh, he's saying pivot again. Everyone says pivot. Yeah. But it's uh, look, here's the example I'll give that I know everyone will relate to. When, when people talk about pivoting in your business, what they're talking about really is think about this. You don't want to be blockbuster video. Yeah, right? exactly. Blockbuster yep. video did not pivot, uh, you know, whatever, 20 years ago. And they weren't thinking ahead in the ways that the, their industry was going to change or could change. They had their yep. head stuck in the sand. They let their business happen to them. And now where did it leave them? They didn't, you know. And so the pandemic, I looked at it as, from a business perspective is I look at challenges as opportunities. And so what opportunities yeah. can we create during this? And I don't mean that in a nefarious, like make money thing. I mean, like, this is an opportunity to think it, it forces you to think ahead and to say, OK, in each individual business of my clients and depending what they're doing, what do we think that's going to look like in two, three, five years? So we're not blockbuster video. The pandemic yeah. forced you to look and gave you time for many people, yeah. gave them time, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, that they often don't take. So um it's been, you know, that that challenge has been and critically important. And I think I preach to everyone so often that, and it sounds real obvious when it comes out of your mouth, but it's, it, gosh, you have, I don't care what business you have, you you better have an online store. And people yeah. go, oh, I have a fill in the blank business, an online store won't work. 
I yeah, say bull crap. Crap. I say bull crap. Think about yep. how many people shop online. And by the way, as everyone knows, over the last six months, that number has skyrocketed even further. Yep. Number one, number two, it's it's think of the generation. Just think of Generation Z, yeah. Gen Z people. They have grown up with smartphones. They have yeah. grown up with the way of life is you buy stuff online. Like yeah. that's that's where we're and as they age, that's only going to become more proliferate more. So yeah, you better have an online store now and start to start to you know, again, not be blockbuster, block, blockbuster video, get out in front of that wave um, and think of ways when you tell me your business and online store won't work again, I, I would challenge someone. Tell me what your business is. I bet you I can find ways you can have an online store that would work. Well, and, and we, we you're speaking right down the line that, that we, we speak a lot now. And in fact, we, we've, we've been doing a series on this, but uh, yes, Every business, if they are not online now, they need to figure out how the hell to get there pretty soon because their competitors are. And even if you say that my my product is so custom that I, I have to talk to every one of my clients, there are ways that your competitors that have that same product or same type of service, they're selling it somehow, a portion of it online because that Gen Zer will not pick up the phone and want to talk to you to learn about you. They have to at least learn about you and get farther down that sales process. Uh, or, or it's just, they're not going to consider you. You're, Absolutely. And, and you said a while ago, you're not, don't have to be the best one. That's just the one that they find. Right. And here's a staggering statistic. And this, I think the stats from 2018, so it's probably a little bit dated, but only 26% of businesses in the U S have an online, uh, some form of an online store, only 26%. Wow. So the way I flip that around is I tell people, hey, if I told you, I'm gonna give you a tip that'll give you an advantage over 74% of your competitors, would you like to hear yeah. it, right? Yeah. Um, and again, I think that hopefully the number has gone up now uh, over the last couple of years, but it just goes to show you how important that is. I don't know. I think Amazon's done fairly well, especially over the last six months. Right. Yeah. And why is that? Because people are shopping online. P look, I, I have a client that I started working with about two years ago now. And, and Damon, you'll appreciate this. People, people around our age will appreciate this. He sells windows for your house. A hundred percent online. No salespeople ever come to your house. Mm -hmm. And when I started working with him, I said, oh, my gosh, your business is going to absolutely explode in the next 10 years. Like you're not, you don't, you have, you, what you think your business is capable of, you have no idea because a yeah. Gen Z person, just like you mentioned, Damon, a Gen Z person, they're not used to like we are, right? Someone, you want to get new windows in your house, salesperson comes out to your house. They're there for three hours. They show you a demonstration, yeah. blah, 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 hundred percent online. His business in the last six months has tripled Yeah, because people don't want you in their house but they no. need windows. So yep. it just accelerated his growth now, the pandemic, but because he was out in front of it. Um, super, super important. And video, my gosh, video is so, so important for your business. I tell any business owner, look, and they go, oh, I don't like being on camera or I'm just not good at it. People like authenticity. So even yeah. if you're, again, let me pick on Paul the plumber. Paul says, ah, I'm not good at this. That's part of your authenticity. If you yeah. have a, a, a you have a southern draw or an accent, or, it doesn't matter. People like that because they know you're a real person. It's not some you know actor or someone scripted. They want to yeah. see Paul Plumber. When I hire a plumber, I don't care if the guy's articulate or not. Can is he good at plumbing? That's all I care yeah. about, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and 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 you you make a and and also with video that that people don't. I forget. I think it was Brad Smith, a, a friend of mine, told me a while ago. Um, he studies studies this kind of stuff. He was talking about the the impact that video makes over a phone, text, anything else, because the people can visually see you, and it's like I don't know, fifty percent, seventy five percent more engaging for them, and the, and they the trust and everything it builds. And you're a hundred percent right. I mean, I'm one of them that I used to. I if someone had told me this time last year that I was doing video, I would have said you're effing crazy because it ain't, it ain't me, and I'm not going to do it. Right? Look at me. I'm old and gray and it's just not my deal. <laughs> but when you when you start to do this and you realize that there there are there are things that people 
you can help people by sharing sharing this information and talking about uh, talking about issues that, that make a difference to them their their in their lives and and they get to know you doing that it is a powerful thing for businesses and paul the plumber can tell people about how paul the plumber is a great plumber once in a while or paul the plumber can tell them about you know his his uh, backyard project and they want to know that paul's a real guy He's hanging Absolutely. out in our neighborhood. He 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 has kids in school. He whatever it is, you know, and that's important to people now. I mean, it always was, but it, it's 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 a lot. The 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 way we've had to integrate our lives, and and the way that we were trying, or people, as you said, our age, were trying to keep that separate. It really was hurting our businesses. I think. And, and by bringing using video and other means to bring bring our lives, uh, at least share our lives with with this makes it a lot better for our, for our customers and our businesses. Yeah, I originally when I started, I started doing videos a couple of years ago. And when I started doing them, I was very uh, I'm strategic to a fault. So I'm always thinking way out. And I say to a fault because I trip over the curb that's right in front of me sometimes. But nonetheless, uh, that's a story for another day. But um, when I, I started doing the videos, I wanted people to get to know me, but I was very hesitant to share anything about my family or anything like that because we've got three girls and kids and, you know, and I don't want, I don't want people, I was looking ahead and I don't want, I don't want people stalking me or, you know, bothering my, my, my family or whatever. But what I found is some of the entrepreneurs that do video that have grown a following and have, are very successful in their business, people like Grant Cardone, uh, People like Gary Vaynerchuk, Gary V, um, those types of people, they share things about their family. Yeah. Um, and so I started slowly starting to do that. Now, I don't refer to my, anyone in my family by their real name. Uh, yeah. Actually, the kids came up with this, my three girls. Um, we have Junior Biz. We have Lil Biz. Yes, Damon Lil. That's L-I-L. Lil Biz. L-I-L. There you go. L-I-L, yes. And then we have Kid Biz. Um, and, so, and we have Mrs. Biz. So, you know, it, I, it's a funny way for me to refer to my family and show that, you know, talk about some of the things we are. I, I did a video one time and I got tons of comments and it was hilarious when I was talking about the importance of a budget and creating a budget. And I started by saying it's the B word. I'm going to tell you about the B word and how it can help your business. And people are, you know, are probably like, oh, geez, I got to tune into this. What's he talking about? And I said, no, 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 not that B word. And I was talking about, it and I said, by the way, Mrs. Biz is allergic to the B word. She has no idea what a budget is. She doesn't know how they work. She doesn't know what, you know, and people were commenting, especially a lot of women. And then there were husbands too. They were like, oh my gosh, I can relate to that. My wife has no idea. Or, you know, the women are like, oh, you're full of crap. You sound like, you know, it was hilarious. And we get a lot of engagement with that. But um, yeah. yeah, I think video is super, super important because again, like you said, people get to know you. And, you know, I, I come on sometimes to tell people about things I screwed up. Yeah, I'm reading exactly. that, right? I make mistakes all the time. So yeah. I think that, you know, again, that authenticity, I think is very important. Yeah. Yeah, and it is. That's, that's cool because it's like you said it. Um, well, and the other thing is too, is we, as people that are helping business owners realize that we're not right for everyone. And I would like them to be able to take a look at me and, and, and listen to the way way I do things and, and understand enough about me to go, hmm, maybe he's not for me. I mean, right. I'll be the first to say, and I, I, I tell a lot of people, it's like, listen, if you, if you want an easy way, this is probably not, you don't want to come with me. This is not, I mean, we're going to get there, but if there's a mountain, we've got to shovel out of the way, we're going to shovel a mountain, you know, and that's the kind of, kind of thing that, and I hope that people get to see that. And I hope that people appreciate just like you're saying, they get to know know from the videos and, and can do that, make that decision. Yeah, I tell people all the time, same thing. I agree with you 100%. I, I tell people all the time, like if you want, you want to hire someone who's going to tell you how great you are and pat you on the back and play cat patty cakes with you, I'm not your guy. Yeah. Not, that I'm going to be, not that I'm going to be mean to you, but I'm going to tell you, I'm a truth teller. I'm going to tell it like it is and, and, and give you real feedback. You know, we're talking real life here and I'm going to give you that real feel, feedback so we can figure things out. That's how, how do you get better? You know, um, you need constructive criticism to be able to get better. Me, myself included, of course. Yeah. 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 Well, and I think that's, that's one of the things that, that I don't know if I do the right thing or not, but I, I'm pretty open with my clients. If I don't understand something, 
I'm going to find somebody that does, or if yeah. I make a mistake, I'm going to say I made a mistake. Yeah, geez, but I'm going to fix it as fast as I can because right. we're because we we're, we're all human in this, and and that's the one thing that I think that um, you know people appreciate as well, and we need to we need to be uh, cognizant of is no one thinks that we're we're flawless or anything like that, and I I just think that it's it's we you want to do business with the people that that you can count count on and in the good and the bad but it's not absolutely. always good absolutely yeah i, I it's same thing and you and i are on the same page for sure damon yeah. I, I agree with you and, and and what better way to do that than video yeah again someone can never meet meet you but they get a really good idea of your personality and um you know what you're like so they yeah. can divide. Is is Mr. Biz or is Damon? Or, or is that my flavor? Right? Is that is that going to work with me? Is that jive with how I am? And if not, that's okay. That's fine. Um, but it gives you a much better idea without you know even jumping on the phone or you know any of that stuff. You can kind of yeah. figure that out. I think a lot from from video. Yeah. So now you're you you and I are kind of on the same same opinion here. The the people that are are need to, if they're not on digital, they need to get digital and things like that. But what are some of the, the really cool things you've seen come out of this? Uh, and we're going to use that ugly word again, where people have made that pivot and you go, wow, this really is cool now. What I see that wasn't quite like that yesterday, but it's here today and it's really working for them. I, I got a real good example. And actually the guy, it, it's hilarious because um, he gets teased because he uses the, that P word so often. I, I'll spare yeah. everyone from hearing it again, but um, he, he and his father run a digital signage company. Yep. Um, and as you can imagine, uh, that's a lot of brick and mortar, a lot of retail type yeah. stuff. I mean, they do all, they do digital signage all over the place, but during the pandemic, when everything was shut down, you know, they're, they're kind of stuck in the water, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. they quickly, you know, he started, he didn't say, woe is me, go into the fetal position, crawl underneath his desk and say, oh my gosh, I hope I make it through. They sat down and said, okay, what is this going to look like? How can we help people? Right. And, and, and tie it into what he already does. So they partnered up with a manufacturer to create um, these little uh, mini kiosks to have inside the door of any, you know, any retail space, office building, anything like that, that has, that can take your temperature and has a, a hand, oh, wow. sanitizer, hand sanitizer. Yeah. So a completely, awesome? diff, a completely different thing for his business, right? But he yeah. he pivoted, right? He, and he said, yeah. the same people that are already buying digital signs and already have bought digital signs for me, they're going to need these things. And so let me yeah. be the person to help them and provide it. So he went through, when everyone else was like, chilling and just not doing anything, he figured it out. Um, and, and, they pivoted so cool. and that it became a huge thing for them. Well, no doubt. I mean, and it's something that's totally, totally needed by just about every business around. And, and the digital signage, if you could incorporate that into it too, it'd be, it would, it could really open up even advertising possibilities as you come in and yeah. yeah so, so much yeah, they, yeah. So he, so they went and they took, once they developed that, that, that kiosk and the product and they got everything worked out, all the details and the costs and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. They went back to all of their prior clients that had bought digital science from and said, Hey, you guys are probably going to need this. We're trying to get out in front of this to help you. You guys, you know, it's like doing business with us. You've done this before. Let us help you. Right. So then they got a ton of business from that. And then as yeah. they're going forward, things start to open up and they're selling digital signage and they go, Hey, by the way, do you need this? Because we also offer this, and people are like, "Yeah." So they end up, it just it exploded their business in a positive way. Yeah, yeah. I, I that's that's very cool. That's very cool because I've I, I've seen some of it, but not not to that extent. And that is that is a really good. You know, here one of the local examples that we saw that I don't know how how monetarily successful it was. But when the when the distilleries switched over and started making uh, hand sanitizer, mm -hmm. and I don't know if that you know monetarily if that's even close to what they needed to do. I didn't have a client that was doing it, but I thought that was a pretty good way to, you know, if nothing else, you know, do something good for your community, and and uh, and continue on. But 
I also know someone that was was selling those kind of products and they were not available for the first four months of this thing at all. So I got to believe that at least for a while there was some demand that they, they were able to satisfy, which, which is kind of cool too. Yeah, no, I look at that as a huge win-win, right? So not only you know, it's good for your business, but like you said, you're doing a very socially responsible thing and helping your community and helping people get those products that they need during that, that particular time, that challenging time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a, that's a great example. And I, I still, and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about your, your uh, online window uh, person you mentioned. That is, that is, that is a very good idea. I had someone that talked to me about um, a roofing company that, doesn't go out to do bids anymore. There's some way that they're doing satellite or something like that, and it's completely virtual as well. And that, that to me, I was thinking some when I they, I heard about that, it was something similar. Is you know traditionally roofing, uh, my wife's uh, family has been in roofing for years. You think of the guy coming out and doing the bid and looking around the roof and all that, and there really is not a reason to do that uh, when you have the the right technology. And another thing that when you when you look at it, because we were talking about with this 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 person that was on the receiving end of a, an estimate from, them, and I was thinking about it like the the virtual window sales. It's even if you do have to have a follow up person that needs to go out and do something after it, it can be it, it's scheduled more on your time frame rather than from the business owner standpoint. First of all, it's better for the customer, right? And then from the business owner standpoint if I've got all these things where I just need somebody to go out and take a picture of the roof, I don't have to talk to that homeowner. I could just schedule just the route and go by and do this. And I was thinking the efficiencies that you get from your salespeople and your, and uh, the customer satisfaction, because you are in, incorporating those kind of methods in your business that would allow you to operate when the pandemic was going on, like nothing happened. Yeah. And I, I, so it's funny you mentioned that because I have, uh, again, not a client of mine, but a friend of mine that has a roofing company. He lowered his workers comp insurance by like 30 some percent, 30 plus percent, because his salespeople never go up on roofs anymore. Wow. He bought a, a 200 and some dollar drone. Yeah. Start. Yeah. It worked. So the sales guy comes out to your house or girl and they send the drone up. And they take pictures of your roof. They take pictures of the damage. They could land the drone on your roof to take real close. You know, they could do whatever they want. Wow. So they take drone pictures of the roof. They can measure the roof with the drone. They can see the damage with the drone, but they never have to get up on top. So like our house, I have no idea. I don't even have a, a ladder that will reach the top of our that are, to, to our roof, nor would I want to get up there because I'll end up killing myself. But yeah, like I can't imagine being up there. So yeah. no need for them to get up there anymore. So yeah. it's all drone. Now, of course, when they're installing a new roof, they, of course, the installer's got to get up there, but sure. can't get yeah. away from that. But um, yeah, the, the the drone technology, you know, utilizing that um, to your advantage to be able to do that. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's something. That's something. So when when you got a pretty good framework here and seeing the 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 overall business ecosphere. So what what do you see happening in the next few months for you know the economy businesses in general yeah you know it's it's a little bit tricky because i do think um the election is going to have in the us at least the election is going to have an impact on that at least to some degree um maybe not maybe not in the first you know the first seven eight weeks although who knows how long it's going to take to have final results um before we know Exactly. Who's won the presidential uh, election. But nonetheless, um, yeah, I think uh, it just really depends uh, on how quickly the pan. I mean, so much is up in the air, so, so much still with the pandemic and with each individual governor and what they're comfortable with yeah. as far as opening up and things like that. I just had a conversation today with a guy who is a restaurant owner and he's he's been in the restaurant business for, gosh, probably close to 30 years. He's got mm -hmm. several different types of restaurants. And he said, if they don't allow me to open up at full capacity soon, because again, I'm in Ohio, the weather's going to turn soon. So he's been relying a lot on patio. Yeah. Uh, on his patio. 
And he said, people aren't going on a patio. I can buy all the space heaters I want. At some point, it's going to get too cold in Ohio. No one's going to go on yeah. whether I have heaters or not. And if I have to operate my inside at one third capacity, even if I keep that one third 100% full, that's not enough. I, I can't make it. And he's like, yeah. well, he called me and he's like, tell me, tell me where I'm wrong. Tell me what I can do, you know? I, I think you're right. I think that's one of the things that that everyone's grappling with in the restaurant industry. It's the same way here where I live in in uh, the Seattle area. We outdoor allowed the restaurants to really do okay once they could open back up, but I, I there just doesn't pencil up when the when it gets cold and you have to be inside. Um, that is one of the things. Hmm. And the carryout's not, I mean, the carryout doesn't, you know, that helps a little bit supplement, but it's not enough. I mean, you think about, especially in the restaurant industry, how thin the margins are in that industry. And yeah. if you're running at a 7% net margin, not to get too technical with, with everyone, but essentially what I mean by net margin, it's just, it's your, your profits, at the end of the day, your net income divided by your, your total revenue. What ends yeah. up, what percentage of the revenue that comes in the door ends up in your pocket at the end of the day. If that's only seven eight percent which for in the restaurant industry is pretty good margin yeah and then you can only operate at a certain uh you know capacity and then you know again takeouts only so much um yeah. so yeah and that's what he was talking about he's like man i think there's going to be a rash i mean there's been a lot of closings but he said i think there's going to be a rash of closings as the weather gets colder in ohio if they don't allow you know things to open up more um yeah. and, and then who knows what that looks like right we have all this then you have all this you know commercial retail space that what's going to happen with that? Are restaurants going to reopen whenever you know things finally clear? Whenever that might be, or people are going to say, "Okay, forget this, right?" DoorDash, Uber Eats, like just open up a little small kitchen, and I'll fire stuff out of the kitchen. I don't have to have a place for people to come sit down. Maybe it's just you know more of the bougie places that are the nicer places make it in the fast food. Like maybe that sort of massive market that's in between the fancy restaurant in your McDonald's or, you know, fast food, you know, maybe that part of the sector just goes away, you know, yeah. maybe that becomes just takeout. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is. It, it's very interesting time for that, that part of the restaurant industry. That's for sure. Because it, you know, it is, like you said, it's not people that are making tons of money. It's people that are working hard to make a living. That's what they're doing. And, right. and unfortunately they, until that changes, that's, until the occupancy changes, they're not going to be able to make a living in those in those restaurants. So you're you're kind of in the manufacturing belt there. What do you see in manufacturing overall? I mean, is that getting hit hard or not? I've got, uh, and it's I swear to everyone, uh, Damon did not ask me to ask me this. Um, uh, although if I'd had the opportunity, I would have had him ask me this. I have two manufacturing clients that are having, one's been in business for 17 years, the other one's been in business for 28 years. And this year, they're both gonna have their best year ever. Yeah. Because yeah. again, the P word, I gotta find a different word for it, but we shifted things, how about that? We shifted things a little bit um, with uh, some of the challenges and shifted how we were doing and what we were doing and marketed to a different, segment in both businesses, both manufacturing different things. And it absolutely helped us. If we would have stayed doing what we were doing and just stayed in our lane, we would have been okay, right? We wouldn't have been in, in danger of of not uh, of, of, of failing or closing or whatever. But um, because we were able to shift yeah. <laughs> and, and, and anticipate some of this, um, we stayed out in front of it. And so they're both going to have like when I say record breaking years, I don't mean they're going to make like, you know, a hundred grand more. Like I'm talking about better than their best of the first 17 and 28 years of their business better by one business will probably be close to 30% better than their best year ever. The other one will be high teens, low twenties. Um, so just absolutely killing it. Again, these aren't businesses that are new, like they've been around for a good while, but uh, you know, we had things set up, um, yeah. you know, being, so I anticipated an economic downturn. Um, I did not anticipate a pandemic. So I, I'm not yeah. Nostradamus. I didn't know that. Yeah. But I did expect that this year, and I started preparing my clients way back, that I wanted to be prepared for an, an economic downturn that would start on July 1st of 2020. 
I thought that's the earliest any type of economic downturn is going to happen. And my clients that were, for, for lack of a better term, fat, dumb, and happy from the 10 years of economic yeah. prosperity we've yeah. had in the United States, right? They said, oh my gosh, Ken, you're paranoid. Like things are great, blah, blah, blah. And I said, humor me. Let's just, you know, make sure we're prepared. So yeah. when the downturn hits, again, not knowing it was going to be in this form, but that we're prepared for it and we have a strong balance sheet. So not only we can survive, but we can seize some opportunities during that time and not in a nefarious way, but again, thinking about how to pivot and shift uh, things. And so we did that. And so now my clients think that I'm Nostradamus because they're like, oh my gosh, I, I thought you were crazy last year. <laughs> Clearly you were, you're a genius. I'm like, no, no, I didn't know any of this was happening. I didn't know anything like yeah. this was going to happen. But um, so it was kind of a little bit of dumb luck, but um, but yeah, we, you know, both, uh, both of those uh, clients, one of the things that we've been able to do is because we had a strong balance sheet, not all, both of them have had, one had two competitors, one had just one of their uh, top competitors locally go out of business. They didn't make yeah. it through. And yeah. so we were able to help their customers and massive win here, hire some of their employees. Yeah. We have this huge increase in volume. We have people who are experienced in the industry and they're out of a job. So we can help save those jobs while helping our company deal with the increased volume and we get experienced workers. I mean, it, it's like the perfect plan. Like if you lay it out exactly how you'd want it to work out as far as being able to save jobs for these people yeah. and everything, it absolutely worked out perfect. So um, yeah, so I, for, for me at least, again, I got two manufacturing uh, clients here that are gonna have record breaking years. So I think if you position yourself well and you shifted as needed, um, yeah. you should be killing it or you could be killing it. Uh, I guess it depends what you're manufacturing, but I think both of them are very different in what they manufacture and we were still able to shift and do, and do well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's good to hear. I think that, you know, what I saw in the beginning in the manufacturing that I was worried about is there was a lot of the wait and see attitude. And I, and I hope that that, I, I don't follow it that far. The clients that we worked with didn't, um, uh, didn't wait too long, but you know, because that is, that is the unfortunate thing about a lot of manufacturers is they, they, their, their sales were not digital. They, and they were not, um, ready to, to embrace video conferencing to do your sales. And, you know, there were still a lot of, a lot of on the, on the planes, in the cars, you know, meeting those clients and doing those kind of things that they thought needed to be done. And, and uh, I, I, I hope that wasn't, that it's not too prevalent anyway, because it, it is that, I think that for, for me, I mean, I'm, a, I'm an old hundred K a year kind of actual flight miles guy. You know, I know what that, that road warrior kind of lifestyle. And you, when you start selling like that and your business is, is, is hooked on that kind of sales and you get thrown into something like this, that's a heck of a change. Heck yeah. Those, those people are, are, you know, you, you've got people that that's what they know how to do. They don't know how to flip open the computer and, and, uh, set an appointment and do a video call and, and just how you have to communicate differently and, and how that works. It's, it's uh, all the way from the personal aspect of it, you know, from, from being gone that much to not being gone that much is quite a, quite a change personally, but uh, just to be able to get business done had to be yeah. a, had to be a rugged change for some of these people. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'll tell you one of those manufacturing owners, which he and I had to have a, a, a kind of a, it, it was, it started out as a difficult conversation because he was starting to get into the woe is me. What the heck am I going to do? Like oh, this yeah. could be the end for me. Like, and I said, I, I didn't physically do it, but I basically kind of, you know, give him one of these and said, snap out of it. Like, yeah. And yeah. I said, here's, and here's, here's what I've mentioned. I've said this so many times. This is like the P word probably for my clients. As I said, here's the thing. No one has ever shrunk themselves to prosperity. So get that mindset out. Don't tell me about it's not going to work. Let's figure out how it can work. Let's start with yes. We know we're smart. We're going to figure it out. And things might look way different than they have. But throw everything out. Don't worry about how you've done business for the last 15, 20, 25, 30 years. Let's 
let's throw all that out and let's say, okay, we're starting a new business today. What's this going to look like? How can we make it work? We're going to grow into prosperity, not shrink. We're not going to be mm-hmm. in the fetal position on our desks. We're going to be looking yeah. for growth opportunities while this, you know, while this is going on. Yeah. Well, that's a good way to do it. I bet they, bet they appreciated that after, after the fact, not so much at that time, but after the fact and things start to move, it probably was a lot better. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, and, and that one particular owner, uh, that meeting turned, you know, started off pretty rough. And even when we ended, I left and he'd been a client for three years now, four years. And yeah. uh, I drove away and I thought, <laughs> I don't know, you know, cause I could tell he was pretty ticked off. Um, yeah. It took him a few days. It took him a few days. And he said, uh, he called me and he said, all right, I'm ready to sit down and talk about growth. And I'm like, okay. And as soon as I walked in the next time he said, you know what? Honestly, that's why I'm glad that I work with you because I needed that. And he said, you know what? And he pointed out to the floor. He said, no one out there would have ever done that to me because I, well, I'm the exactly. owner. I, I signed the paychecks. No one out there would have challenged me like that. Yeah. And so yeah. who knows what direction my business would have taken if I wouldn't have someone like you in my corner to say, yeah. stop, the, stop the pity party. Like, let's let's figure it out, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So that, it was rewarding. Again, I said, I left and I thought, I don't know. He might not be a few you know, client for much longer. <laughs> like I may have ticked him off a little too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And a similar example. We have we have one one uh, client that's in the, the oil field industry, and and uh, they they got hammered. I mean, they got hammered, and they are lucky enough that uh, they they've been in business a long time, so it's it's not like this is the first time. And uh, it was actually. It, it was it was pretty refreshing to talk to them and and the only uh, because they said you know we've been through this before we're gonna we know what we're gonna do and I and I said well this is the one thing I can I can I can offer is that you know you know uh, and they're a big project company right so when a project ends unfortunately like you've been able to do over the last ten years those 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 people they don't have anything to do you have to reallocate the people and some people aren't going to have have work anymore you got to make sure that you're really good on that because to as you know when businesses get big millions of dollars become rounding almost and and if you're if you're not careful tens of thousands will be a million dollars before you know it and then a million will be three and the next thing you know you've lost money or you've lost a lot of money and uh that that was one of the things that I think they did very very well was was being honest with everyone and they worked through it and and you know I, I do have to really commend them they they it, it was and and then the the leadership to be able to say listen we've been through this before we have a solid balance sheet because that's what got me thinking of it. you said we have a solid balance sheet and they've they've emerged from it so far with with a pretty good uh, and then they diversified. They, they pivoted. I mean, they moved into some different, they did some, they had, honestly, they had already saturated the, the major oil producing regions they wanted to hit in the United States. And they, they were ready to do the next uh, into different industries. So it was an interesting one for them. But that's, that's a, a great example of, of sometimes that, that outside influence that you gave your client there because you're, you're, they're not signing your paycheck. Uh, all of it anyway. And uh, it, it, you have a different perspective, you know, we're, we're, we're as advisors, sometimes we're almost bound to get, not bound, but we really should give them the, the news that they need rather than the news that they want to hear. Right. That's a great way of putting it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, going back to what you said, I, I always start like to break it down. Like you said, when you get to be a larger company, and, you know, like I said, a million bucks is, becomes a rounding error to a large company. Whenever I hear anyone mention that type of thing, I say, now, hold on a second. I don't, I don't care if you're a hundred million dollar company and you go one million is one percent. Right. Here's what yeah. here's here's how I break it down and really bring people back to reality. A million dollars. That's 20 people at fifty thousand dollars a year. That's yeah. 20 people's jobs for a year. Now, what if one of those 20 was your wife, your daughter, yep. your right? So let's think about it in that way, right? A million bucks, we just lost jobs for you know 20 people. Yeah. Um, let's let's think about it that way and think about it from the people perspective. 
um, not just like numbers and sense. And that probably sounds crazy coming from a CFO, right? Numbers nerd and like so focus, mm -hmm. but there's a definitely, especially during the pandemic with all this uh, bad stuff that's been happening, challenging times is it's, it's, it's difficult sometimes, or it's easy, I should say, to lose the people aspect of it because you're, you're so worried about the dollars and the numbers. And you said, you got to remember that the, the people side of that too, not you, uh, Damon, but you know, as you're thinking through these things, as we are all thinking through these things, yes. you know, the devastating impact that has, you know, a lot of these businesses are, are, are family businesses. Yes. And, they have if you have a family business how many people in your family even extended family brothers cousins sisters uncles yeah. whatever are working in the business so if that business goes under think about the impact on that specific family holy crap right um could have a massive bad bad impact on that family so uh super important to to really sort of even as a numbers nerd like myself to to keep that um empathetic and 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 human aspect to the to the whole equation well, and, and you you said something a, a little bit ago there that, you know, you can't shrink yourself into prosperity. And that's that's where one of the, you know, the first conversation that we had with any client is how are you doubling down on your sales? How are you doubling down on your sales right now? Because, I mean, there there are always opportunities to sell more. I don't care what industry you're in there. There's always opportunities to sell more. Um, even if you're in the restaurant industry, you could sell more. Uh, it's it's oh, it may be hard, might not be the way you want to, but you can sell more. And and uh, I think as as people, it was real easy to do the the contract layoff kind of thing. But on the other hand, too, if they weren't, that's a temporary. That that'll only you know stop it if they didn't turn around and and then go okay now how are we selling more today, and and really calling all hands on deck to do that better than they ever had done before. Um, that that was the, the thing that I saw in some clients and some companies where they they really did do that. They said listen we we are going to have to contract we won't be here tomorrow, but now that we're here we we're all going to go. And, and figure out how to get moving in the, in the right direction. And that, that yeah. was, there was pretty cool stuff there. Yeah. And, and what I challenge people in that scenario is yes, there are times when you, you know, again, just keep the doors open. You do have to contract a little bit, but in, in most cases, my challenge would be you're thinking you're going to lay off a hundred people. I say, let's lay off 50 and let's figure out how to do it with only 50 people laying off. And it's still a terrible situation, but, and going back to what you said about always the opportunity to sell more, Little known fact, I hardly ever hear anyone talk about this. For the average business, 65% of new sales comes from one source, existing customers. 65%. Yeah. So most businesses are all chasing that new customer, right? And what's the cost of acquiring a new customer for your business? Or mm -hmm. someone who already knows you, likes you, and trusts you because they're already doing business with you. How can you help them more? How can you provide more value for them and, and create that 60, you know, grow that 65 percent? Um, because that's who who's the easy who's it easier to sell a product to someone who's known you for five years and done business with you for five years or someone who met you off the street 10 minutes ago. Right. Clearly, exactly. you know, silly example, but it's so true. And the other part is, I think that when people are get can get so focused and so shifted on the sales side that they lose sight of the customer service side. So yeah. another stat. So again, I, I keep telling you I'm a numbers nerd. I'm proving it because I got all these stats in my head. Like I, I'm I feel like and you'll you'll get this reference, Damon, and probably a lot of people watching won't, but I feel like I'm Cliff Clavin, right? I got Cliff Clavin's uh, stats for you from from Cheers. But yeah. so taking that a step further, 65% of new, new revenue is from existing clients. 70% when you lose a customer, 70% of the time you lose a customer, it is not because of price. It is because of a customer service problem. Yeah. I feel like a lot of times, anecdotally at least, that is the result of I need new sales. I need new sales. I need new sales. Yeah, yeah, I got you, Mr. Customer, for three years. Okay, you'll be fine. And all of a sudden you turn around and they're gone because you neglected them because you're so busy chasing that new dollar. So I, I yeah. think those not losing sight of those, when, when people start reducing, and this happened during the pandemic, when people start reducing expenses, I tell them the first two places that you need to look 
What's going to directly impact sales? When, if I reduce this expense, is it going to have any impact on sales? And then yeah. what impact is it going to have on customer service? Mm-hmm. Because I want to stay away from, or at least the reductions in those areas be as small as possible. Because those, you lose your pipeline, right, of new sales. And then you lose, you know, you, you don't retain what you already have, which, oh my gosh, now you have a real big problem, right? Yeah. 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 It's, it's the, um, the thing that I like too, you, customer service is always a thing. And if you've got a great sales organization, your, your sales will cover up for your customer service. But that's another reason I, I think that's widely not discussed at all about e-commerce and why businesses should, should take it and start doing e-commerce because when you do e-commerce, your customer service is there for everyone to see the level of customer service and you got to be good or you aren't going to be successful at it. But from a management standpoint or, or really understanding your customer service, there's no better way then go try to sell on Amazon or go try to sell someplace where your customers can leave honest feedback anonymously. Uh, <laughs> if you want to improve your customer service, do that. And, yeah. and it, will, it will force you to be better or you will not sell because your reviews will be bad. <laughs> no one will buy from you. Right. Yeah, you're exactly right. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's, it's honestly one of the benefits that we talk about with our clients when they're, when they're looking to go into e-commerce it's, and one of the things they really have to shore up because my customer service as, as a manufacturer or as a business down the street here, um, Paul the Plumber, <laughs> if Paul the Plumber is not selling online or doesn't have much of an online presence and he has a, an unhappy customer, well, he doesn't have a Google page or he doesn't have a website. He's not doing it on Angie's list or something like that, that would, where there was a public forum, people aren't going to go and say, Paul, the plumber did a bad job. <clears throat> if he's selling on Angie's list or he's selling someplace where it's, you know, and I'm not using the right places, but um, you know, someplace that's public like that and he's got a public presence, people are going to put it out there that he did a, he did a great job or did a bad job. And unfortunately, for the customer service world. And if you're in e-commerce, you understand that people that are upset about their service are like 10 times more likely to do anything that some, or even more than someone that had good service. So it's, it is a telltale place to, to um, see how you're doing. Yeah. And I, look, I encourage that. Uh, oh my gosh. It's one of my, one of my big things is always ask for that feedback. Always, yeah. always, always via email, maybe even right. You send you send an email to someone who per- purchased something. You wait, you know, whatever it is. After you think they've received it, right? You wait three, five days, and you send them a follow up email, and you say, "Hey, how was everything? Are you satisfied with your purchase?" Right? If not, please reply to us. If everything yeah. looks great, here's a link to you leave us a Google review or whatever type review, right? And so that encourages. Not only can you learn from that, right? So if you had a, a hiccup, a boo boo, because those happen, you can make it right. Um, and you'd rather someone, because look, sometimes some people, depending on the cost of the item, I know I've done this. I'm guilty of this. I'll buy something and it's not what I expected and it's crappy or whatever. And I'll be like, okay, it was 10 bucks. I'm not wasting my time to complain. And then I got to package it back up and send it back. Forget it. I'm just going to let it drop. But, and then that, so that business owner never knows that there was a problem and maybe they continue yeah. to do that same thing over and over again. Next thing you know, they're out of business, right? Because everyone stops uh, reordering from them. But this gives you an opportunity to get that feedback. If you do have a problem, a kink in your system, you can fix it. And then if not, think about that scenario, that email. If things aren't right, let us know and we'll make it right. That's a good thing, right? So you go, you know, as a matter of fact, I am mad about this, and but they're going to make it right. So that that gives me a positive thing in my head. If everything's great and you would love to leave, we'd love to have a review from you. The reviews yeah. you're going to get there in most cases are going to be nothing but positive reviews, right? Yeah. If they get a problem, they're going to email you back and you're going to fix it. And then guess what? After you fix it, you wait three to five days and you send them another email and you say, hey, wanted to make sure we corrected everything you know, in the right way for you and you're happy. If so, here's a link to leave us a review. You, you hit it up again um, to you know help with those reviews and help you be better at business. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, a, that's a great... Uh, a great way to do it for sure, because, you know, people don't want 
to leave a bad review usually it, it's just because something wasn't like they wanted and if you if you honestly try uh it usually works out just fine and and uh and they're happy you're happy you know and it's and it's resolved it's a, it's a good thing but it does it does help i i do believe it's a good way um as as uh companies are looking at uh e-commerce or something like that uh online selling it will be a, a place that they are going to have to improve as their customer service they will they will have to do that uh you know there's just a there's a myriad of things that people have amazon has done it i've got a client that does a lot of amazon sales and and he said we hated it we absolutely hated it hated it and now when you can when you get so you do well on Amazon, everything else gets easy. Right. Because you can handle that and you can handle that at volume. Everything else, uh, handling other platforms and other kind of customer service things become easy because Amazon sets the bar very high. And if you can, mm -hmm. if you do that, you set your systems and, and the way you do things at a high level and that, that makes it easier to do business like everyone wants. And I'll tell anyone out there that doesn't have an online store is not in e-commerce and they want to get in it. Here's an easy, here's an easy hack. You want to, you want a, a pro tip slash hack. Look at how Amazon does business. Yeah. I mean, it sounds obvious, but I talk about this all the time with folks. There's no need to, to recreate the wheel. Find someone who's doing what you want to do that does it really well and replicate what they do. Not copy, not plagiarize, but, but do it like they do it. Amazon's got it down. I mean, that's not, that's part of the reason why they're so successful. Not only that they you can buy anything under the sun there, but it is so. What what I'll tell you, you know, whatever. Fifteen years ago, buying something online, I was hesitant because it's a yeah. pain in the butt. You get it, and it's not what you think. Think about like clothes or things like that. Think about buying windows online. Think about buying furniture yeah. online, which is becoming more and more regular now. But Amazon makes it so easy to return things. Yeah. So it's like there's no risk, right? You throw it back in the box. As a matter of fact, I took something back just recently um, from from an Amazon purchase, and there was a there's a I have a Kohl's store. You can return Amazon stuff at a Kohl's department store. Yeah, they have a little Amazon kiosk, and I I heard about it. And I'm like, well, let me go check it out, right? Just to kind of learn about it and to hopefully make it easy for me. I walked in. I didn't save the box. I didn't repackage anything. I took the product back in. I walked up to the kiosk. The woman scanned it. She said, do you have anything else? I'm like, no. She goes, the credit will go back on your card. Thanks for doing business with us. I'm like, it took like, I'm telling you, it took, if it took 15 seconds, I'll be amazed. Yeah. Literally, she just took it, scanned it, and basically looked at me like, what else do you need? I'm like, that's it. That, that's all I got to do to return something? She's like, yeah, we'll take care of it. Holy crap. Yeah. Right? I mean, it makes it so easy to do business with them which is going to just make me order from them more often. You know, um, they make it easy. Yes. And, and it's, uh, I, this is, uh, I talk about e-commerce way too much, but they, I think that they think there's a lot of benefits, there, uh, especially for people to do, but we're, we're, it, as it does sometimes, Ken, this, the conversation is I could sit here for a long time. We're getting close to an hour and, and you know what? I do want to have you back again sometime and we'll, we'll maybe even come up with a specific subject because I would, I would like to share more about how you're helping people and, and some of the things you do, but where are the best places for people to reach out and get a hold of you now if they need, wanted to talk to you? Yeah, go out. Uh, you can go out to mrbizsolutions.com. Um, go out pretty much any of the social media platforms. Um, if you look for Mr. Vid, you'll find me. Uh, I'll tell you, go out to, uh, on YouTube. If you're prone to videos, um, I've got a Mr. Biz YouTube channel as well. It's got, you know, over a hundred videos on it now, um, to, to check those things out and you can reach us through any of those avenues as well. But same thing, if nothing else, go out and consume a bunch of free stuff. Right. And like I said, I've got over a hundred yeah. videos on the YouTube channel and on Mr. Biz Solutions Facebook page. Um, tons of different videos on different topics. You can go on the, on the YouTube channel, and if you're having some challenges with cash flow, you can search cash flow and pop up all the cash flow uh, videos. Right, watch them. Most of them are four or five minutes long, easily digestible. So, um, but yeah, reach out. Uh, and 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 by the way, uh, this will date me again, Damon. But uh, Casey Kasem, we take requests. Okay, so if there's a video you'd like to hear me, uh, a topic you'd like to hear me do all a video right. on. 
you know, shoot us a message and, and we'll, we'll put it on the list and we'll do it. We, we love it. Right. Sometimes we're yeah. like, okay, what do we cover? What, what, what should I be covering right now to help people? Um, so we love taking requests. Yeah, that's cool, man. That's cool. Well, as, as I said, we've got Mr. Biz, AA, AKA Ken Wentworth with us today on the Exit Your Way Roundtable. Thanks for stopping by and sharing your knowledge, man. I, I really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me, Damon. I had a great time. You bet. Bye, everyone. All right, man. Thank you so much.